Hi guys, so some of you have probably noticed that V-Ray have released V-Ray 5 beta version for us to kind of test out. So I've installed it and this is the first time I've actually opened it up. So I'm just going to go through all the new features and just have a play around and see, see what we can do. Um, my V-Ray toolbar is up here and I've noticed that we have this new V-Ray asset browser and it looks very much like the Corona one. It comes with over 500 ready-made materials. So this is fantastic. It's a great starting place for a lot of our materials. I believe we can just right click and preview these materials and it also tell you what's going on in here. And to apply them, I think we just right click on them and add selection to object. which is cool. I wonder if they're at real world scale. So I'm going to open up our material editor. I've got, just got it on compact so we can fit it all on one screen and I'm going to eyedropper that. So I'm just going to put show shaded on in viewport and the mapping it's not real world scale so you'd add a UVW to map that on but these materials look great. Another thing I've noticed in these V-Ray materials is there's a preset. So much like uh, Mental Ray a long time ago and the, and the physical materials, we've got basically starting points for materials. So this is really cool. So if you needed to start new material and also the um, material previews they've looked like they've been updated so you can see much better what these are actually going to render out like there was always a little bit of a difference between um, the, the preview in the material editor and what it rendered out like so it looks like that's been improved so yeah this looks all really exciting um, one thing I'd love to see is the ability to add our own materials to this library. Keeping materials organized has always been something um, that I felt is a little bit clunky in 3ds Max. So to be able to add our own tiles, for example, would be really, really cool. All right, I'm going to open up one of our scenes from our tutorials to, to take a look at the V-Ray frame buffer. All right, so what I do know is that we need to add a V-Ray light mix so V-Ray have added the light mix feature, which I know has been around um, before, but just not in the same way as Corona. And I really enjoyed using Corona's light mix. So to add the light mix, you have to add a render element before we render. So it should be um, V-Ray light mix. So I'm going to add that and I'm going to hit render and I'll jump back when this has rendered. All right, great. So that's rendered out. And the first thing I guess you're going to notice is the frame buffer has changed. This is V-Ray frame buffer two. And we can see over here we've got layers. So, so this looks like it's going to work like Photoshop. And we can add in lens effects and we can kind of turn them on and off. You can see the, the glow and the glares on here. So we can turn that on and off. Um, I didn't put a denoiser on, but you can play with it here. And then we've got light mix down here, which is our source. And for me, this is a massive game changer. Whereas I normally use interactive render to light the scene, we can basically just throw our lights in wherever we've got lights, hit render, and then deal with the light and setup once it's rendered. So it was a massive reason that I used Corona, and I'm just really excited that it's in V-Ray now. So this is the render from the interior tutorial series. And what I'm going to do is turn off all the lights. I mean, with V-Ray Light Mix, it's probably a good time to start naming your lights correctly. But the first thing, let's turn on the environment. So this is the environment light, and it's not actually producing any light in the scene because we've got this HDRI light in our scene. So what we can do, let's, uh, let's make this more into like a, a night scene. So what we want to do, I'm just going to turn the environment off for the minute, is bring this down to almost what it would be like at night, so a little bit of moonlight 
and then our environment. I mean, we can change the color. We don't want it on black. What would be nice in here, when I'm setting lights, I always say we have to use temperature rather than color. So it would be great to have a color temperature in here. But let's kind of get like a dark moonlight and just pull that right down. And then I don't know which, because I haven't named my lights. I mean, this is our lamp light, which is cool. Again, let's kind of make it warmer. Not that warm, though. Something like that. And we can actually brighten that right up. Bathroom, we can't see in this scene. So these are the bulbs in our spotlights. So they don't need to be reducing so much light. So I'm going to bring them down quite a lot. So let's pretend they're kind of just like on dimmers. And then let's bring our interior lights. These, so these are the IESs. We can bring them down. And it'd be nice to be able to copy and paste these colors over. Let's just do something like that. I mean, that's um, a quick way to change our daytime render into a nighttime render. And if you think about how many times you've had to render different lighting scenarios, here we've kind of got two for one on our renders. We've got a nighttime shot and we've got a daytime shot with very minimal effort. So that's a quick overview of V-Ray 5. Really excited to, to start using this and the material library and the light mix are massive for me. I want to explore this layers tab a little bit more, but I mean, I was using Corona for a while because of light mix. And recently I've been swaying more towards V-Ray because of V-Ray cloud. And because I work remote most of the time, it's just great that I can just ping things up into the cloud and, and get them back. So I was swaying more towards V-Ray cloud. And then I was just kind of taking it on a project by project basis. But now with V-Ray add-in, the light mix and the material library. I'm really excited to see what we can do with this.